Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we are going to do a walk around of my monster mower. I built it with one of my best friends in high school when we were what, 15 years old, 16 years old? 15, yeah. yeah, about 15 years old. So we're going to try and get it started real quick and drive it around front and go do a walk around. We also might play with some RC cars because those things are fun. All right, so we're going to pull the monster mower back around, put the battery on the charger. See, we haven't cranked this thing up all winter, so eh, of course the battery's going to be dead. Before we do the walk around, we are going to try and straighten my front axle. Some goofball hit a tree with it. Wonder who that could have been. Uh -uh. All right, so we're going to have to tie the rest up. You're going to have to move the tractor around. We're sliding the cub. So let's get another heavy object to put between it. Can someone please explain to me what we're doing? Truck, cub, tractor, sandwich. You right now hold it? It's welded on all sides. Well, that didn't work. I guess we'll have a video of us straightening out the axle uh, some other point in the future. It's not gonna be hard. We're just gonna take it out, put it on our press and press it back flat. So. Let's get on to the walk around. This is my 1967 Cub Cadet Model 72. This one, however, is just slightly modified. This tractor I built with one of my friends in high school when we were 15 years old. I learned how to weld, machine, fabricate, made lots of mistakes, but overall, it was a great learning experience and I'm glad I built it because I have something really cool and unique to show for it. By the way, the initial build for this thing only cost me 300 bucks. Everything was made from scrap metal and stuff was just given to me. Things that were given to me, the frame itself was junked out. It was missing the steering column. It was missing the engine. The only thing it had was a seat, the spring and the transmission. It was, it was kind of junked out. I don't think I have a picture of it. The motor is a Kohler Command 11 horsepower. A lot of people told me that that thing will not be able to spin these tires. Well, I proved them wrong. This thing will do wheelies. This motor is actually kind of interesting because it's two motors that we made into one. When we got it, this motor was actually laying in a ditch for probably five or six years. We used another Kohler Command, but it was a 15 horsepower downshaft version to get this one to run. 
believe it or not, it is using the 15 horsepower flywheel, carburetor, fuel filter, valve cover. The drive line on this is your bone stock Cub Cadet drive line, except we had to make some modifications. We made the center blue hub to mount to my engine. Everything else though is your typical Cub Cadet drive line. We built the entire subframe out of scrap metal we got from a junkyard. The front axle is made completely from scratch. After about four years, we wore out the kingpins. So we ended up making new ones, welding on some one inch cold roll right here to add a little bit of extra strength, changed our bolts and put a greaser in the front so we can grease everything, trying to prevent wear. To make the front spindles, we used trailer hubs, but because the bolt pattern for the wheels were not correct, we ended up welding on little tabs. Then we spent forever trying to drill them so we could push lugs through, and eventually we decided just to weld our lug bolts onto them. It's kind of sketchy, but it's held up for like the last eight years or so, so I'm not going to complain. How we steer this is we're using a rack and pinion out of a club cart. This rack and pinion was given to us because it was broke. I don't know if you can tell, but right here, the shaft was broken off. So we very carefully welded it back on inside the cup. What was actually kind of funny about it is when we first put this together, when we would steer, we got it a little bit backwards. So we would turn to the right and the wheels would go to the left. So we had to flip everything around, which is what made everything kind of look at a little bit harsher of an angle. It wasn't intended to be like that. To get our steering column down to the steering rack, we're using universal joints. Yes, out of a standard socket set. We've got two of them. We have one down here and one up there. Also, this thing gets a little hairy to drive because if you pull up, you lose the steering. Don't pull up. The transmission we used on this is the bone stock transmission that came with the lawn tractor itself. All we did was stand it straight up and flip it around 180 degrees. In doing so, we were trying to be smarter than the machine because if you know anything about Cup Cadets, stock ones run off the flywheel, not the crankshaft. So they spin backwards. Our thought process was, since we're running off the crankshaft, not the flywheel, it's spinning the opposite direction. So we came down to our 90 degree box and we were gonna rotate the transmission 180 degrees to try and get it to spin the right way. Well, guess what? We're dumb and that doesn't work. When we first started with this thing, we had a three-speed reverse and a one-speed forward. Great for going fast backwards, not good for going fast forwards. So what we ended up doing is going into it and there's a cool little trick with these transmissions that you can take the ring gear and actually flip sides inside the housing, thus fixing my problem. Super easy. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this rat nest up here, but the drive line is pretty simple. All we're doing is we go from our clutch through a pillow block bearing to a U-joint that goes to a 90 degree box off of a bush hog. It drops our power straight down to the top of the transmission. People always seem to have trouble figuring out how we got the drive line to work, but it's simple as a 90 degree gearbox. My axle extensions are made out of three and a half inch pipe, some plate, and some more plate. And those were a trick to make, i tell you what. The reason they were a trick to make was this plate is welded and that plate is welded. If we weren't very careful with getting everything squared up, we would have wheels that wobble. Wobbly wheels just isn't good. However, we actually managed to nail it the first try on both of them and those things spin true. I ended up making a custom gas tank for it because the first gas tank I had came off of a weed eater and you can't go very far with a gas tank off of a weed eater. Ask me how I know. So I grabbed some stainless steel out of a junkyard and kind of welded it all together. Some of the welds didn't turn out the best because I wasn't able to have a backing gas and with stainless and you put it in a closed environment, you kind of need a backing gas. Here is my dash that controls the entire thing. I have my main fuel on and off, a spare switch that's not doing anything at the moment, Here's my underglow. Yes, it has underglow. And my headlights and taillights. We spent probably 30 minutes one day wiring it up. Works great. This is my throttle. The wheels on this thing are off of a 90s Dodge truck. They happen to be the same exact ones that are on that one also. The wheels came off of my friend's dad's F350 that was lifted six inches. Fun fact, those wheels came off the same truck. I don't know if you can tell, but we're sharing parts. Here's the world's cheapest light bar. Got it on Amazon for 25 bucks. One thing we learned when we were building this thing is steering geometry. Apparently it's important because when we originally built it, we got it wrong, super wrong. So wrong in fact that it prematurely wore out my front end. What would end up happening is as we would turn, one tire would lay in further than the other. And when you're trying to push a tire around a corner, it doesn't steer well, go figure. We learned a little trick that I'm going to actually show you with this build right here. It basically involves some string, kingpins and a differential. After my trick, we got my steering geometry correct. 
this thing turns so much easier now. It's crazy. I can turn it one-handed on concrete. The hood is actually a reproduction hood that someone gave to me because my original one had a huge dent in the side of it that we couldn't get out. The decals came from eBay. Don't know who sold them, just randomly found them. As you can tell, the entire thing is kind of dirty. It's been sitting for quite some time now. The paint we use to paint it is Magic from Tractor Supply. It works all right. I used Magic on this thing originally and in the sun, not very UV resistant. This one still shines up pretty nice though. Something I would like to stress with this. When I started building it, I didn't know what I was doing. Neither did my friend. We just started getting metal together, trying to weld, and made something. The only things we had when we made this thing was a welder, a porter brand, and a drill press. All I'm saying is that if you have an idea, no matter how young you are, and you have a little bit of an ambition, and just the bare minimum of tools, you can make something just like this. Just takes a little creativity, and a little bit of guesswork, and guess what? We make mistakes. This thing has gone through so many different rebuilds because of learning from our mistakes and tweaking things, making them better. If you watch, I'm building this one now. I'm using a lot more advanced techniques because we've acquired the tools that allow me to do so. I can build something as crazy as this. You know, the lift is going to be able to go on and off. It'll have rear steer with the same tools I built that. So if you have the ambition and you want to make something really cool and unique, just go for it. I had a lot of people tell me that this thing would never work. And you know what? I was able to drive it and prove them all wrong. I do have plans for the future with this thing. Most of them are things that have been needing to get done that I've just been putting on the back burner. One of them, when I push my clutch in, I don't know if you can tell, but the entire wall up here is flexing. My goal is I'm going to add reinforcement braces from this point up from that point up. I'm also going to work on the drive line a little bit. There's a really weird vibration in it. I think I finally figured out what's going on, but that's a video for another day. My front axle needs to be fixed. We tried to do it earlier in this video, didn't quite work out well. So I'll make another video on straightening my front axle. Anyways, that is my monster mower. I hope you guys look forward to seeing more videos of it on the channel because I have a lot to make with it. If you like my video and you wanna see more like this, press the subscribe button. If you really like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you like the videos I produce on my channel, check out some of my build series, such as Stretched Lifted Mower Project, my Farm All H Restoration Project, or just anything else that we're doing. Cause guess what? We've got a lot of stuff. Let me show you. Simplicity, golf cart that we're probably not gonna do anything with. That is part of a log saw. Edelman walk behind. Kohler generator. Broadmoor. Snapper that we're putting tracks on. Tracks. John Deere. 48 Dodge Power Wagon record you heard me right it is actually a record other edelman walk behind little errands four by four wood chipper three cylinder kubota diesel cub cadet we've got a lot of stuff so join us for the ride and i will see you guys next time later